The machinist makes continuous use of hand tools every day in the shop. This videotape will show you the hand tools that are commonly found in the machine shop and some of their uses. After viewing this videotape, you should be able to identify the hand tools that are in common use in the machine shop, write down the safety procedures to follow in using these hand tools, and write down the use of each tool. When using hand tools in the shop, there are some safety precautions you have to take. Always wear safety glasses. Take off your watches and jewelry and keep your sleeves rolled above the elbows. Always use the right tool for the job. Hand tools will be found in many locations throughout the machine shop. The machinist will have his own personal collection of small hand tools which are kept in a tool box. Bench vices will be found clamped to the benches and almost all shops have tool cribs for special tools and other hand tools that the machinist would not keep in a tool box. It is very important that the machinist learns the operation of the tool crib and cooperates in handling of tools to make sure that they are returned in a good working condition after use. A common work holding device in the machine shop is the bench vise. The bench vise is used for holding work for hand operations such as sawing or filing. The bench vise may also be used for holding parts in assembly or disassembly. It is very important when clamping work in the bench vise that you do not over tighten the jaws and bend the work. Soft jaws would be used for holding work with a high finish since the hard jaws of the vise would mar or scratch the work surface. When clamping work in the bench vise, do not allow the work to extend into an aisle so that other people can be caught on it. If you need to clamp long pieces in the vise, put a rag over the end of the work and never leave the area until you have completed the hand operation and remove the work from the vise. Another work holding device is the C-clamp. C-clamps come in many sizes and are commonly used to hold work on the drill press or clamp it to work tables for performing other hand operations. Another clamping device is the parallel clamp or machinist clamp, which is used for holding more delicate work. This clamp does not have the holding power of the C clamp. It is equipped with two parallel jaws and two screws for holding work with a higher finish. Hammers in the machine shop are generally classified as either hard or soft. Hammers such as mauls or the ball peen hammer are classified as hard and used for operations where the surface marring is not important. The machinist hammer or ball peen hammer is round on one end and flat on the other. The round end is used for peening or riveting metal. The other end is used for general purposes, such as hammering punches or chisels. Ball-peen hammers are classified by weight and come in many weights and sizes. Soft hammers, such as plastic mallets or lead hammers, are used for positioning workpieces on a machine or in a vise. The movable jaw on the vise will usually raise slightly when it is tightened and a soft hammer will seat the workpiece in the vise without marring the finish. Pliers come in several shapes and jaw actions. The most common pliers used is probably the slip joint or combination plier. They are measured by their overall length and come in sizes from 5 to 10 inches. Pliers are designed to give you more holding action than you could apply with your hand. Interlocking joint pliers, sometimes referred to as water pump pliers, have a slip joint and may be adjusted for different thicknesses or diameters of materials. The needle nose pliers is used for holding or getting into small openings. Side cutting pliers, sometimes referred to as lineman's pliers, 
are used for cutting small diameter materials or wire and can also be used for holding. Diagonal cutters are used for cutting small diameter wires. Do not use diagonal cutters to cut extremely hard materials since it will nick or mar the cutting edges. Another tool that falls in between pliers and wrenches is the vice grip wrench. It has an adjustable screw in the handle and a releasing lever in the opposite handle. It can be adjusted and clamped on a piece of work for holding it securely. Trip the handle to open the jaws. Hand snips are used in making straight or curved cuts in sheet metal. Two types are combination snips and aviation snips. Combination snips are designed for both straight and curved cuts, and they make a good general purpose hand snip for the machinist. Aviation snips come in right hand, left hand, and straight types. Left hand and right hand snips are primarily meant for cutting left and right curves, and the straight aviation snip is used for making straight cuts. These snips use the compound lever principle, making them capable of cutting tougher metals. The machinist uses a large variety of wrenches in the shop. The adjustable wrench is one of the most versatile. It is used for machine setup or for tightening tool posts and tool holders on the lathe. Adjustable wrenches are measured by their overall length and come in a large range of sizes. Adjustable wrenches should be used with the adjustable jaw in the direction of the pole. This exerts less pressure on the movable jaw. When working on machines, other types of wrenches may be used. The open end wrench, which has openings on both ends and comes in many sizes. Box wrenches, which have a closed end on each end. Or the combination box open end. All of these wrenches come with fractional size markings on the wrench for easy selection. When working in the shop, you sometimes may need to use a socket wrench, which has a socket on a ratchet handle and also uses different length extension rods. These socket wrenches come in standard fractional sizes with different square drives, such as 1 quarter inch, 3 eighth inch, and 1 half inch. Pipe wrenches are used by machinists on coolant pipes and other attachments to machines. It is better to use a pipe wrench for removing these fittings than a pair of pliers or slip joints. The wrench can be adjusted to the pipe and gives you better holding power without depending upon the strength of your grip. Pipe wrenches also come in a large range of sizes. The proper wrench should be selected for the size of pipe it is to be used on. Another useful wrench is the spanner wrench. These come in many different types. The type of spanner wrench you use depends on the location of the pins or holes in the plate being removed. Another form of wrench is the strap wrench, which is used for removing a threaded face plate on the lathe or turning apart with a high finish. Socket head wrenches come in many sizes and lengths to fit the socket head screw. One of the common mistakes in using the socket head wrench is not selecting the proper size for the socket. This results in the shoulders of the wrench being rubbed off or the socket inside the screw being turned out, making removal of the socket head screw impossible. Another form of wrench is the tap wrench. There are normally two types. The hand tap wrench, which is used for larger taps and reamers, and the T-handle tap wrench. The hand tap wrench has a movable jaw, which is tightened against the square of the tap by turning the adjustable handle. This wrench comes in different lengths to allow for more leverage as the taps get larger. The T-handle tap wrench is generally used for smaller taps. It has adjustable jaws for tightening against the square of the tap. 
this type of tap wrench is generally not used on taps larger than one quarter inch. Machinists use screwdrivers for tightening or loosening screws. These tools vary in size from a tiny jeweler's screwdriver for fine precision work to a heavy shank screwdriver. There are two common types of screwdrivers, the straight slot screwdriver and the Phillips or cross point screwdriver. Screwdriver size is determined by the length of the blade. You must always select a screwdriver whose tip is the right width and thickness. Too wide a tip can mar the surface around the screw. Too narrow a tip exerts poor leverage on the screw slot and may cause the tip to ride up out of the slot. Too thick a tip will not fit properly in the screw slot, while too thin a tip may exert poor leverage and may burr the slot. To recondition a screwdriver, first grind the end of the tip square with a shank. Then, grind the thickness by holding the flat of the tip on the grinding wheel. The radius of the wheel will usually produce a satisfactory tip. Use a slight pressure in grinding and go slow to prevent heat buildup. Too much heat will draw the hardness from the blade and a soft blade will bend out of shape under pressure. A Phillips screwdriver is especially designed to fit the heads of Phillips screws. It has a fluted rather than a flattened blade. The different sizes of Phillips screwdrivers are designated with a number that relates the diameter of the blade to the size of the point. Punches are used to drive pins, bolts, and rivets in or out. Punches are also used to line up parts or to make punch marks for starting drills, laying out work, or marking parts. Solid punches have a short tapered shank and are used for starting pins out of a hole. Pin punches are used to finish driving the pin after it has been started with a solid punch. The long shank of a pin punch makes it unsuitable for starting tight pins or bolts. Select a pin punch with a smaller diameter than the hole you are driving into. Prick punches have a point ground to an included angle of 30 degrees and are used in layout of work for divider marks and before making the center punch marks. Center punches have a tapered point ground to an included angle of about 90 degrees. Center punches are used for marking the center of holes to be drilled. Machinists use a variety of cold chisels. The types most commonly used are flat, cape, diamond point, round nose, and gouge. The flat chisel is used to cut thin metal and to chip flat surfaces. It may also be used for splitting nuts. The cape chisel is used for cutting keyways, grooves, and holes that require a strong, narrow chisel. The diamond point chisel gets its name from the shape of the point. It is used to cut V grooves and to chip in square corners. Round nose and gouge chisels are used for chipping concave surfaces, such as oil grooves. Screw extractors are used to remove broken studs and bolts. One end of the extractor is square, so it can be turned with a wrench. Use the charts that are provided with the extractor sets to match the size of the stud with the correct size of the extractor. The chart will also indicate the correct drill size to use in preparing the broken stud for extraction. Hand taps are small tools used for cutting internal threads. The taps are accurately threaded and ground to a given thread size. Hand taps come in three types. The tapered tap or starting tap has a long taper on the end for easier starting in the hole. The plug tap is tapered for three or four threads from the point. And the bottoming tap is almost square in the end for cutting threads into the bottom of a hole. The usual procedure for tapping threads is to use the taper tap alone when the hole goes through 
providing the taper clears the thickness of the workpiece. When the taper does not clear, it must be followed with a plug tap. In holes that must be tapped to blind or bottoming, the taper tap would be run into the hole first. Then the plug tap. And then the bottoming tap to clean out the few bottom threads that are left from the taper. Another threading hand tool is the threading die, which is used for cutting external threads. Dies are made in a variety of sizes and shapes and come in all of the standard thread sizes. Some of the more common types of threading dies are the split die, which can be adjusted to the size of the threads. The adjustable die, which has two jaws, which can be adjusted. And the thread chasing nut, which is used for cleaning up threads or for chasing the threads to size after they have been rough cut oversized using a lathe or an adjustable die. Most hand threading dies must be held in a holder, which is called a die stock. This die stock must be selected to fit the threading die and is equipped with an adjustable screw for locking the threading die into position. The die stock is equipped with handles to provide good leverage for turning the die on the piece being threaded. Hand reamers generally come in three types. A straight flute hand reamer, which is used for reaming a drilled hole to a precise size. The helical flute hand reamer, which is used for reaming holes that have had keyways cut in them and cuts to a given standard size. And an adjustable hand reamer, which has straight flutes, but can be adjusted for precision reaming and machining of a hole by hand. There are many sizes and types of twist drills. Here you see twist drill bits in fractional sizes, numbered sizes, and lettered sizes. These drill sizes could be used in a handheld drill motor for drilling holes into work parts. But twist drills of over one half inch are not used for drilling by hand. You should now be able to identify some of the more common hand tools found in the machine shop. The safety procedures to be observed in using these hand tools and the use of each tool. These and many other hand tools will become familiar to you as you gain experience. Familiarity with these basic tools of the trade is an essential part of becoming a machinist. <laughs>